In today's video, we're taking a look at some NHL trade rumors. One of the latest updates on JT Miller, Jacob Chikrin, and Vegas' goaltender search to replace Robin Leonard. We'll discuss all that coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, today we're going to be taking a look at some updates and some of the top names on the NHL trade bait board. It's been dragging on here for quite some time now with uh, Miller and Chikorin. And of course, Vegas' new uh, found problem in between the pipes with, of course, Robin Leonard expected to miss the entire NHL season here in 22-23. It's widely expected they're going to go out and make an acquisition for a goaltender. There really is next to nothing in NHL free agency uh, available that would be anywhere close to uh, being a starting goaltender caliber. There's some that are maybe third stringers. You might maybe get a backup, but it's really not much out there. It's slim pickings. I mean, Braden Holtby is one of the more prominent names out there, but there's a lot of belief that Braden Holtby likely isn't going to play this year and very well might be calling it a career here in the very near future. Now, yesterday with Vegas, we talked about the rumors surrounding Jake Allen in Montreal and that, of course, that they might have interest in acquiring the veteran netminder. Assuming Carey Price is going to be healthy and able to play, Montreal might actually have themselves a crowded crease between Price, Allen, Montembeau, and, of course, youngster Caden Primo, who's likely going to be the main uh, goaltender in the uh, American Hockey League for the Laval Rocket now. Of course, that would be one terrific option. I don't think Montreal is going to be anxious to pull the trigger here. I really don't think it's possible for Carey Price or the Montreal Canadiens to really know really what he's going to be capable of this year until he gets to training camp. I know leading into him playing last year, lots of reports that he felt good, the knee was feeling good, but then it was after playing that he was getting you know, the pain and swelling and the other side effects that were coming back after he played games. Um, so, of course, you know, we won't really know um, how his knee is going to respond until he actually has a chance to get into uh, training camp, go through the rigors of a lot of the uh, you know the drills and exercises, maybe get into some preseason action in, and then have a better shot from there. Of course, it's even possible he might start the regular season, and then things could change. I mean, look at the Boston Bruins and Tuka Rask. I know I know that wasn't the start of the season, but still he had a major hip surgery, uh, signed a one-year contract, came back, had a good start. The first game looked really good. And then things slowly started to go downhill. And then within a short time, he said, I'm done. I can't do this. So, you know, could Montreal be in a similar predicament? It's really hard to say. So I don't think they're going to be super anxious to, to jump the gun on a deal there. I do think that they will explore that if Vegas is still looking or another team uh, once we get into training camp. And if they know Price is it going to be able to, to go and play a, hopefully a regular healthy season. Now, some other options I do want to look at a little bit closer today include Simeon Varlamov of the Islanders. We did discuss him a little bit yesterday as well. Of course, that could very well be another option. Look, we know the Islanders have a lot of secrecy surrounded by them right now. Are they signing Nazem Kadri? Are they not? Do they have deals in place for Romanov and Dobson? Uh, you know, would they consider moving a player out like Bailey, who's been the, the main player mentioned, but it's obviously difficult to do. So maybe Varlamov makes sense. Who might be able to go to Vegas, give them the cap space, and could be a problem solved. It's going to weaken their goaltending, sure. But, you know, at the same time, um, you know, you got to do what you got to do to make the rest of your roster good. It's hard to juggle it all in a tight cap situation. But another name that's kind of come to the forefront here that very well could be an option for Vegas and even any other team that might be looking for a goaltender as well would be their division rival in San Jose Sharks goalie James Reimer. Now, Reimer's actually had a pretty solid career, especially the last few years. Like, you look at his, uh, his stats, like, you know, they're not going to jump out and wow you, but they're certainly pretty respectable. I think the, you know, last year he put up a 2.9 goals against and a 9-11 save percentage his first year. Uh, with San Jose uh, after coming back, obviously uh, leaving uh, you know his previous team, and he the Sharks we know didn't have a lot of team success. The defense in front of him struggled a lot, and he still put up these kind of numbers. So obviously, to me, like Reimer is still a reliable, respectable goaltender who could very well carry the workload, like he did a fair bit last year, and he could do it again. And he's only under contract for one more year, a two point two five million. We know the San Jose Sharks also have Eden Hill and Capo. Kakinen under contract um, that obviously are probably, you know, bigger parts of the team's future. I would suspect that, uh, you know, I've heard other people say that maybe that one of them would be the more likely goalie to get moved. And you could argue that Reimer maybe shouldn't be the one to go because he was probably the, the, you know, the best player last year in that position. 
but he's also the oldest and on expiring contract and the team needs to get younger and clearly I don't think he has a long-term future with San Jose could they re-sign him for another year or two sure that's possible I don't know I don't see it you know lag dragging on or lasting too long so I don't think they would have acquired Hill and Kakinen as well if they didn't see them as being maybe bigger parts of the team's longer term future so Reimer being moved Makes a ton of sense. It gives San Jose a little bit more flexibility on their cap. And at the same time, uh, you know, it could be a good help to another franchise. Now, according to uh, Sheng Peng, who reports for the San Jose Sharks, uh, one of the beat writers out there in San Jose, his release release reports say sources indicate that the Sharks will be looking for a second round pick in exchange for the veteran netminder. So to me, that's not a bad price to pay. Like I said, he's still in his mid-30s, still playing well, one-year deal. Uh, whoever Vegas gets is likely going to have to be, or not have to be, but probably preferably would be a one-year contract, given that Robin Leonard's still under contract for several more years after the upcoming season. So, uh, with you know, give them a, a temporary help, but not tie them to somebody too long-term. So we'll see where things go, but Vegas has other options out there. Um, I think Jake Allen might be the best option, in all honesty, based on what he's going to give you for contract and performance and all that. But Reimer's right there too. Uh, and Verlamov's going to be a little bit more costly from a cap perspective. But at the same time, you know, um, has probably a little bit more recent experience being a longer-term starter, I guess, besides Reimer. Reimer did start a fair bit last year. So hard to say which way they go. But Reimer and Allen's contracts are way cheaper than Verley. So we'll see what the Vegas Golden Knights decide to do. But uh, Reimer is a legit option they could turn to if their division rival are willing to make a deal to help their team that one of the teams are going to be fighting for in the standings, you know, possibly get stronger. So it may not be something they really care to do, but time will tell. Now, what are the latest on the Jacob Chikrin front? Are the Ottawa Senators still considered one of the heavy teams interested, possibly even the front runners? It certainly seems that way. I know recent comments from TSN 1200's Sean Simpson uh, indicates from what he thinks is that essentially the prices are high and Dorian's being patient. And I do think that that's quite likely the, uh, the scenario here at play. I think the, the Senators have been linked to him uh, and had enough sources reporting on it that there definitely appears to be a lot of legit um, you know, facts to that to the fact that they're interested doesn't mean it's going to happen. Of course, uh, they have to find a deal that works for both sides. But we know that uh, the Arizona Coyotes have been looking to trade this player for about a year now, and it still has not happened. Obviously, the price is high; it remains high. He's under contract for a few more years at like four and a half million dollars. You know what? It's, it makes sense. He's got good value. They see the value. They they don't want to give him away for anything less than they feel is. Fair market price, and it's just quite that simple. Of course, we also heard a former senator, a current member of the media, I guess from his uh, online show with Brent Wallace, Mark Mathot, even made comments recently that he says he knows for a fact that Chicker would be quite happy to come to Ottawa, so it wouldn't be you know any issues with him you know, uh, wanting to be in Ottawa and being happy to be there and all that. So certainly if they worked out a trade, the player would be quite happy and would uh, gladly accept coming to the Ottawa Senators organization. So uh, obviously he knows the family, has a lot of connections that way. And, you know, that's not surprising to hear. But what would the package look like? Well, from what we've heard, uh, Arizona, um, you know, uh, sources, including like Craig Morgan, has mentioned recently that it's believed that Arizona is more focused on picks than players. Uh, obviously, like I said, they're they're obviously going into a new arena here, this college arena with ASU. They're, I don't think, looking to be overly competitive for the next few years. It doesn't make sense as they build up their picks, and then with those picks comes prospects to hopefully you know get this new arena deal in Tempe. They have a lot of stuff going on. Uh, it's hard to say, but a lot of people don't think that they're going to be you know overly good or competitive. The next couple of years, they also have to keep a few bodies around to, to, you know, sell some tickets and make things interesting, which we see, like, you know, they have Clayton Keller. They signed Lawson Crows to a longer-term deal. Uh, you know, players like that. And obviously, Chikrin sounds like in the comments he's made himself that he would probably probably prefer to be out of there as well. So, really, you know, from a player pick perspective, I mean, Ottawa has lots of both of these 
to be, uh, you know, to be considered. Now, of course, with the Ottawa Senators, you have to think maybe if they were going to ask about a prospect, they might ask about former first-rounder Ridley Gregg, of course, is currently starring for Canada in the World Junior Championships that are going on right now from the redo from the 2020-2022 tournament. Um, so, obviously, he's been a standout player for uh, Team Canada here so far. It looks like he has a real legit chance of being a solid top six forward, plays with some grit, has lots of skill. I wonder if he would be a player they would ask about, and I wonder how the Senators would feel about that. Many believe, obviously, next year's first-round pick would almost have to be included, as well as probably a couple of mid-round picks, second or third rounders, something to that effect, um, and then maybe at least one or two younger players or prospects in the mix, and I would think that Greg might be a player they ask about. I think other players like Jake Sanderson are definitely off limits. There's no way that's happening, uh, but the Sens do have plenty of other interesting prospects outside of Greg, but Greg has elevated his game and his, uh, you know, his factory here in, in the future enough with his recent performance in the World Juniors that you do have to wonder if he might become one of those untouchable prospects for the Sens or a prospect that teams are going to be asking about right at the forefront for any team they engage in and trade conversations looking to get better here. So we'll see. For right now, the Sens appear to be certainly still interested in Chikorin, but the prices remain high, um, and everything's kind of at a standstill here for right now. But uh, we'll see. Uh, there's also a lot of belief as well uh, from uh, guys like Sean Simpson and others of Medias in Ottawa that uh, Chikorin is very likely to be dealt by the end of training camp, that the, the Coyotes really don't want to have a drag on too long. But again, they have to get the price they want. Or it could, because they've proven already that if they don't get what they want, they're, they're willing to be patient and wait here. But if a deal is going to be had by the time the season actually gets underway, uh, certainly look for the Ottawa to be heavily in the mix. Now, when it comes to JT Miller in Vancouver, uh, still a lot of belief that there's a good chance the player is going to end up being traded at some point. Uh, but it's quite possible that we go into the season and see this scenario drag out a little bit further, maybe even to the NHL trade deadline. You have to think that whether or not Vancouver is in the playoff mix could have a big part of this. Uh, but certainly, uh, based on comments recently from JT Miller himself, uh, on a podcast which is hosted by John Scott, former NHLer, as well as the comments from his agent to some media. Uh, you have to think that there's a real good chance that negotiations have not gone well so far and may not even pick up again until the end of the season. Like I know his agent uh, talking to Vancouver Media even said that when he was there, he was asked if there was a chance that they would go into the season and say, once the season starts, we're not talking contract extension anymore. And he said that that was a real distinct possibility, something he had to talk about JT about, but, you know, could certainly see it happening. A lot of players don't like to talk money in contract during the season. They don't want to be distracted. So, you know, if that's the case, that could pretty much seal his fate, in my opinion, to be traded and not get a negotiation, uh, you know, that works out for both sides on an extension. Uh, not good. I mean, he, JT Miller himself did say in the podcast that he admit that they did have some early negotiations. Things did not go well. They were not close. Um, obviously, he said he wants to be in Vancouver, believes in the group, loves it there. Been there for a few years now. Said all the right things in that regard. Didn't really give an indication one way or another if he thought he'd be traded or if he thought they'd have a good chance of working on a contract. Seemed to be careful with his words, which is what you'd expect. But at the same time, didn't really give a lot to go on. But the comments from the agent to me was a little bit more, I guess, concerning if you're a fan who's really hoping he'll stay. Uh, to me, it gives more of an indication that there's a better odds of him being traded. I mean, Miller himself on the podcast even said that he'd like to get something worked out. But he also said that, uh, you know, if management's, um, if, if he doesn't fit management's vision, that you have to respect that and, and maybe it's be time to move on, right? So uh, you have to wonder what's going on here. But if negotiations have not gone well and they're nowhere close on an extension, they haven't had any talks since the draft, and if they want to go into the season and the player and the agent say, once play starts, we're not doing this, that really doesn't give a lot of time to get an extension worked out. Uh, and to me, that pretty much seals the fate on a trade. I would think that Benning and Alvin would probably be the type of management team, though, that even if they're trending towards making the playoffs, that they're not going to likely you know, let him be their own rental and walk for nothing afterwards. They'd have to be you know, believed uh, that they were contenders, I think, before they would go into that scenario like that and take that chance. Because, like, you know, they've seen... Enough other teams recently, like Johnny Gaudreau in Calgary is a prime example, where that backfired. Sure, they had a little bit of playoff success, 
but then the player was gone and there's no assets coming back. So it puts them in a really tough situation. Not much we know for sure, but it sounds like Miller wants some big money, wants some big term. Uh, Vancouver certainly wants it to fit their cap, which is tough. Also wants less term because of his age. So there's a big gap. And if they don't want to negotiate during the season, that's going to certainly make him one of the more attractive players leading to the deadline. We, there was lots of talk last year at the deadline and even in the early part of the offseason about teams that were reportedly interested. And I would only imagine if he comes close to playing like he did last year and putting up anywhere near 99 points for the coming season. One, he's really going to get paid in the offseason. And he very well might be the biggest name available at the trade deadline, or at least one of the biggest, because there's lots of other expiring deals this year that could make things very, very interesting at this upcoming 22-23 season's NHL trade deadline. So we'll certainly have to look forward to that as we get through the upcoming season. So let me know your thoughts on the players we talked about here today. Who do you feel Vegas goes after for a goalie? Uh, does Chickren end up in Ottawa by the time the season starts? Will Miller finish the year in Vancouver or sign an extension, or is he going to be moved? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. We'll talk about it further. If you're new to the channel, of course, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep up to date with the latest news, rumors, and analysis on all 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Hello.